Stan Gibalisco here. Uh, I uh, think that I have come up with a satisfactory explanation for how we can derive the formula for the resonant frequency of an inductance capacitance circuit uh, given a given inductance and a given capacitance and there will also be a certain amount of resistance which is not shown here uh, because it's irrelevant to this equation. When you have a state of resonance in an inductance capacitance or LC circuit, the inductive reactance is exactly equal to the negative of the capacitive reactance. That is, the, the inductive and capacitance reactances add up to zero. They cancel each other out. So your net reactance is zero. Now that's different than just a plain old ordinary resistor which never has any reactance at any frequency. When you have a coil and a capacitor either in series or in parallel the inductive reactance in hen um, the inductive reactance in ohms is given by 2 pi times the frequency in hertz times the inductance in henrys the capacitive reactance in ohms is given by minus 1 over 2 pi times the frequency in hertz times the capacitance in farads for frequency, you can also use megahertz if you use microhenries for inductance because mega and micro cancel each other out. And you can also use megahertz and microfarads or occasionally terahertz and picofarads because those uh, 10 to the 6th and 10 to the minus 6th cancel out and 10 to the 12th and 10 to the minus 12th cancel out giving you 1. But notice the minus sign here. Capacitive reactance is always considered negative and inductive reactance is considered positive in ohms, ohmic value. Theoretically uh, this all involves the use of an imaginary uh, number the square root of minus 1 called the J operator but here we can get by without messing around with that it would only compound the confusion the important thing to realize here is that when you have an inductance capacitance resistance circuit that is a circuit containing a coil a capacitor and a resistor usually or a certain amount of inherent resistance in the coil, uh, you will get, uh, if you connect them either the coil and capacitor either in series or in parallel, at a certain frequency f, you will get a condition of resonance. And there's a formula for finding that frequency f based on the inductance and the capacitance. So let's stick with frequency in hertz, inductance in henrys, and capacitance in farads. We can always convert the units that were given into hertz, henrys, and farads before we go to work on the equation. At resonance, the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactance exactly cancel each other out. And if there's any resistance in the circuit, that remains, but the inductance and the reactance uh, cancel out. So what happens at resonance anyway? Well, let's manipulate this formula just a little bit. Uh, what we can do, well first of all is to start erasing things. When we have a condition of resonance the inductive and capacitive reactances are equal. Uh, they're equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. So what we really have is 
inductive reactance x sub l 2 pi times the frequency times the inductance equals minus minus 1 over 2 pi f c. They're equal and opposite so they add up to zero reactants. Uh, well these minus signs are kind of redundant and they can therefore be considered to cancel each other out leaving us with that. This is still true when you have a condition of resonance. Uh, let's divide uh, well I've got a crib sheet here to guide me through. Let's divide through by uh, 2 pi L 2 pi L. Divide each side through by 2 pi L. That is going to cancel out the 2, the pi, and the L on this side and it's going to add up or it's going to add on an extra 2 pi L here. So we're going to get 2 pi times 2 pi times F times C times L. Remember F is in Hertz, C is in Farads, and L is in Henry's, and we can worry about the conversions later. F is in Hertz. Now, when we have that particular situation, uh, we can multiply, let's multiply this whole business through by F. So we get F squared here, and when we multiply by F down here, we in effect get rid of this F, leaving us with this, which is also, ha this also happens to be equal to 4 pi squared times, and let's reverse the C and the L, LC. F squared equals 4 pi squared LC. Now let's take the square root of both sides of this equation. Now, in order to do that we gotta make some room so we'll erase all this stuff up here and we'll go back and start over at the top. We're gonna take the square root of each side of this equation giving us F equals 1 over 4 pi squared, and you take the square root of that, and you get 2 pi. You take the square root of L times C, and you get that. That looks strangely familiar, doesn't it? The frequency in Hertz at resonance is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of the inductance in Henry's and the capacitance in Farad's. Or the frequency in, uh, uh, the frequency can also be considered in terms of other units, but Rather than bother with those, such as, for example, kilohertz and microfarads and microhenrys or some such, it's best if you just convert everything to the base units, hertz, henrys, and farads, in order to get that equation. So that is the equation for the resonant frequency of an inductance capacitance circuit. The frequency given in Hertz, the inductance given in Henry's, and the capacitance given in Farad's. I hope now that you might understand how that formula can just simply be derived by manipulating the variables in the original formulas for inductive reactants and capacitive reactants. If you like mathematics, you probably like this video all right. 
If you hate mathematics, you certainly did not get this far. You would have clicked off long ago. So I can say, you don't know what you're missing, dude, or ma'am. Ma'am, that doesn't sound... Well, yeah, I guess that's all right. Dude and ma'am. At least ma'am has some element of respect to it. I don't want to disrespect females. Now, that's, that's a no-no. That's definitely a no-no for any male of any stripe. Even Stan Jibalisco, who will now sign off, much to your great relief, and say so long until next time when we'll meet again and discuss some more highfalutin mathematical realities. <laughs>